Welcome to St George's Church in Woolhope for this service for the fourth Sunday of Advent. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them nor worship them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God and visit the sins of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands in them that love me and keep my commandments. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days shalt thou labour, and do all that thou hast to do. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no manner of work, thou and thy son and thy daughter, thy manservant and thy maidservant, thy cattle and the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline all our hearts to keep this law. Honour thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour, Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. And thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's wife, nor his servant, nor his maid, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is his. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, Have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our queen and governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour and humbly obey her in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. O Lord, raise up, we pray thee, thy power, and come among us, and with great might succour us, that, whereas through our sins and wickedness we are sore let and hindered in running the race that is set before us, thy bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us. Through the satisfaction of thy Son, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be honour and glory, world without end. Amen. 
and the Holy Gospel is written in the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 26th verse. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. He shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I want to return now to that reading, the gospel reading which I read, but I don't want to focus particularly on the text as a whole, but I want to focus rather on one very, very small and very, very vital part of it, and that is this whole business of the virgin birth. Now, there has been in recent decades, recent centuries, really, one has to say, a move to try and strip away from Christianity anything that might be seen as supernatural. Now, that, of course, leaves us with a very human religion, which really, frankly, is no good to anybody anyway. But nonetheless, there has been that desire. And the virgin birth is something which has particularly attracted the attention of those who want to do just that, who wish to strip any supernatural element out of Christianity. And you can see why. We know, if we know anything about virgins, that they don't give birth to children. We have ultrasound, we have scientific methods, we have biology, we know this sort of stuff. And so better we are told by our betters that we should simply think of the virgin birth as a, as a metaphor, as, a, as an image, as a myth, something to try and convey something but nothing to be taken literally. 
the problem is, of course, that the people in the ancient world understood what it took to make babies. It's not as if we are super evolved, super enlightened people now, and back then they were dim, and back then they were kind of backwards. That's to indulge in what C.S. Lewis calls chronological snobbery. That's not something to indulge in at all. They knew that all this business of a virgin birth was something to be sneered at. In fact, I can show you where that happens. John chapter 8, Jesus disputing with the Jews. He's saying to them that if they are truly children of Abraham, as they claim to be through their lineage, they should act like Abraham. Listen to this. Jesus said to them, If you are Abraham's children, you will be doing the works Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works your father did. They said to him, we were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Now, did you catch that? We were not born of sexual immorality. Anybody who would have heard this stuff about virgin birth back in Jesus' time, well, they would have jumped to the conclusion that it seems the Jews jumped to here, that Jesus is not the product of a virgin birth, but rather Jesus is the product of doing something a virgin shouldn't have done. That's the innuendo that is there, an innuendo which is caught there, not born of sexual immorality and so on. They knew It was impossible. We know it is impossible. And friends, that is the point. It is impossible. You see, the virgin birth is there to stand as something which attracts our attention. It is there to be a lightning rod towards Christ, to say, my goodness, what does this mean? It's there to make us pause and think, well, what possibly could have caused this event. Surely only God who created the heavens and the earth in the first place, surely only he can bring something like this about. I mean, if you created the heavens and the earth, well, a virgin birth is small beer in comparison to all of that. And so it stands to attract our attention and it stands to demonstrate to us that Jesus is A, fully human, the son of Mary, and B, fully divine, who was, as it says in the creed we've just said, incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary. Fully human, fully divine. That's the point of the virgin birth. That's why it is there recorded for us in the scriptures. That's why hundreds of years before Isaiah had prophesied that a virgin would give birth to a son who would be called Emmanuel. And what does Emmanuel mean? God with us. So be slow to dispense with the virgin birth. Yes, it is impossible, but yes, that is the point of it. It's impossible for humans. It's not impossible for God. Therefore, it draws attention to the one who was born of a virgin. It draws attention to Christ and it demonstrates that he is God with us. That's why the virgin birth stands. That's why it's important. And that's why we must not put it to one side. Amen. Godliness is great riches if a man be content with that he hath. For we brought nothing into the world, neither may we carry anything out. And let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Silence night, holy night, Silent night.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto her whole council, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice, to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and true reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, Draw near with faith and take this sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. 
For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that the, all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God, it is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we, receiving these, thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. In the body of our Lord Jesus Christ that was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. In the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee, for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And just assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs who hope of the everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. And glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Holy to town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark she shineth, the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. The morning stars together proclaim the holy birth. And praises sing to God the King, and peace to men on earth. For Christ is born of Mary, and gathered all above, while mortals sleep. The angels keep their watch of wandering love. How silently, how silently, the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his hem. No hear me hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.